Well, I'm our facts of Mars. Scientists have developed Neanderthal miniature brains. I'm going to show you the size of these things. That's the size, just for comparison. They say about the size of lentils. Scientists are to bring Neanderthal miniature brains to life to see how humans differ from the closest relatives. Tiny blobs of tissue about the size of a lentil will be grown from human stem cells edited to contain Neanderthal DNA according to reports. So they're going to take CRISPR and put our DNA, uh, Neanderthal DNA, into these things and who's going to donate brain tissue? It makes me a little nervous. Professor Savanti Pebo, Director of Genetics at Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, when the experiments will take place, told The Guardian, that's the UK Guardian, Neanderthals are the closest relatives to everyday humans, so if we should define ourselves as a group or species, it is really none of we should compare ourselves to. We're seeing if we can find basic differences in how nerve cell functions that they may be a basis for why humans seem to be cognitively so special. I don't think we're all that special to be honest with you, given that we're always trying to find a way to blow ourselves up. The lab has been at the forefront of efforts to crack Neanderthal genome and last year published papers shedding light on just how many traits we owe to our ancestors. But not our ancestors. It's already inserted Neanderthal genes for cranial facial development in the mice and Neanderthal pain perception genes into frogs' eggs to study pain thresholds. But a frog's egg can't feel pain. That's nuts. Scientists have made a re recent uh, discoveries about Neanderthal. A raft of recent discoveries. As last year emerged that, although they're often portrayed in drawings as swarthy, they are, they in fact arrived in Northern Europe thousands of years ago before modern humans giving them, giving time for their skin to become paler as their bodies struggled to soak up enough sun. Uh, here we go again. It's the old art of Africa theory, which is just utterly absurd. When they interbred with modern humans, those pale genes were passed on. So, let me get this straight. Modern humans were black. This is all I need to see. This is just, I don't know, anti-white racism right here. It's also the mental disorder of liberalism. It gets worse from here. What happened to the Neanderthals? Neanderthal population started to decline about 40,000 years ago. Many factors probably contributed to their extinction, but the decline coincided with the movement of anatomically modern humans into Europe and Asia. Where did they come from? Neanderthals inhabited Eurasia from the Atlantic regions of Europe, eastern to Central Asia, and as far north as present-day Belgium, southward to the Mediterranean, and southwest Asia. Could they talk? Some studies suggest Neanderthals could speak like modern humans. How long were Neanderthals on Earth? Both fossil and genetic evidence indicate Neanderthals and modern humans evolved from a common ancestor between 500,000 and 200,000 years ago. And it tells you how do I get, your, get tested for DNA. I would strongly warn against getting tested for DNA. In our, in our current political climate, we're in deep trouble. When you have entire 
school systems, uh, like the uh, Portland Community College. Portland Community College is dedicated to the extermination of white race. If you don't believe me, look on their website. We also have an entire church de denomination while we're at it. That church denomination is United Church of Christ, which is similarly dedicated to the extermination of white race. So my advice, don't get genetically tested. And try to um, convince your relatives, don't get genetically tested. Because all that information is going to go into a data database. And it could be used against you later on in life if the scumbags went out. Yeah, uh, that's about it for today. Not buying any of this. I think it's phony baloney. And it's, of course, mad science. I want to face some lives.